The Tri-State Crematory, located in Noble, Georgia, gained national attention in 2002 when over 350 bodies that were slated to be cremated were instead hidden and stashed in a variety of hiding places. Let's look into that. The Tri-State Crematorium was founded in the 1970s by a man named Tommy Marsh. It was located north of Lafayette, a city in northwest Georgia, in a small community called Noble. This crematorium tended to perform the cremations for quite a few different funeral homes in not only Georgia, but both Alabama and Tennessee as well. It succeeded in making cremation possible in many communities where it had not been an option before. Due to this, the crematorium was valued and respected within the community. Tommy Marsh was a great businessman, respected throughout the locale. He ran other businesses as well, such as constructing concrete vaults and renting out tents. An odd combination of jobs, sure, but he did very well. However, over time, his mental health began to slowly deteriorate, and by the mid-90s, he was not holding up very well at all. In 1996, due to his abysmal health, he had no choice but to pass over ownership of the crematorium to his then fresh out of college 28-year-old son, Ray Marsh. And that's where our story really starts. Ray Marsh continued to successfully run the crematorium for years without much issues. Immediately apparent issues, that is. He seemed to be a natural. However, in 2002, the Environmental Protection Agency office in Atlanta received an anonymous tip that they ought to go give the Tri-State Crematory a little bit of a look-see. A person walking their dog had come across scattered human bones near the Tri-State Crematorium property. The EPA sent some officers out to go give the place a look, and they almost immediately uncovered a human skull, along with various other bones. This wasn't even the first time someone filed a complaint against the crematorium. Before this, a truck driver had twice called the local sheriff's department, saying that he saw a couple of bodies out in the open on Marsh's property. The sheriff ran out and checked the property, but he wasn't able to find anything unusual. On another occasion, some hikers discovered human body parts strewn about in the woods near the Marsh home. But again, nothing came of this discovery. EPA agents returned to the property to come across a grisly discovery, finding more and more, and more human bodies. They found actual piles of decomposing bodies in a storage shed on the property. In another one of Marsh's vaults, they found even more piles of corpses. Some in coffins, some not. Bodies were strewn about all over the outdoor sections of the property, as well as stashed away and hidden indoors throughout the property. Some were laid out in coffins that had tipped over, leaking juices from their decomposition all over the floors. Coffins were stacked haphazardly throughout rooms, sometimes floor to ceiling, falling apart and rotting away. Some bodies were merely skeletons in suits. Some were completely wrapped up in sheets. Some were still in their hospital gowns. One body was sticking halfway into the oven. One body was simply chucked on top of a wooden crate, hanging off the sides, with the skeleton of a baby down at its feet. Obviously, this was a big deal. A local funeral home director got on the phone with the media and informed them that the Marsh property was being swarmed by police. The news broke, and local news outlets were on the scene and filming within a couple of hours. With such a shocking case, there's no doubt it was one hell of a scoop. They were sure that this would make front page headlines all around the US. Without a doubt, it was big, and some reporters even spent about a month crashing near the property just so that they could provide around the clock updates. A federal disaster team was summoned to the area, along with a portable morgue that had to be shipped all the way from Maryland. First of all, they set out to identify all of the remains, a daunting task. Many, if not most, of the remains were so badly decomposed by this point, with some being mere skeletons, that it was near impossible. Out of the 2,000 bodies that had been sent to the crematorium since Ray Marsh started working there, 
339 of those bodies were found on his property, with only about 226 of them actually being identifiable. Had living relatives been available, the rest of the bodies would have been possible to DNA test. However, when not knowing who the remains may belong to, it's difficult to find a relative to reach out and compare them to. So what the hell happened? Why were all these bodies just kind of thrown out and stashed away instead of cremated like they were supposed to be? The thing is, we still don't know. Even to this day, there hasn't really been an answer. What we do know is that instead of the cremated ashes of their loved ones, these people were instead given, uh, cement dust. Yeah. Marsh claimed that the cremation oven was broken. However, officials tested the oven and found it to be in working order, although admittedly having minor faults here and there. Operational nonetheless. Even if it was broken, leaving it unfixed for so long would have been inexplicable. It's the one thing you need to operate a crematorium. Officials noted that most oven manufacturers actually have programs that offer regular maintenance to customers. The excuse that the oven was broken just doesn't really hold up in the end. Ray Marsh was arrested for over 300 different criminal violations and eventually was charged with 787 counts of abusing a corpse, burial-related fraud, theft by deception, and giving false statements. He was facing literally thousands of years in prison for these crimes. The Georgia Supreme Court would eventually come to settle the case. They were faced with the task of determining whether or not a dead body had any actual monetary value, as that would be the determining factor in the theft cases. The traditional common law held the idea that a human corpse didn't actually have any value, something that worked out in Ray Marsh's favor. Marsh pled guilty and got sentenced to 12 years in prison, with credit for the time that he had already spent in jail. About 1,700 family members of the identified, uncremated bodies came to sue the Tri-State Crematory and several of the funeral homes that had sent the bodies there. The trials didn't proceed very far until settlements were reached. The funeral homes also sued the Tri-State Crematorium, first settling for a whopping $36 million in damages. However, after argument after argument between attorneys, all of the settlements failed, including those with the affected families. Nobody could agree on a settlement that would prove beneficial and acceptable for all involved. A second trial was ordered, taking place in 2004. During the second trial, the families ended up settling with the Marsh family when they were offered about $80 million in the end. Given that it wasn't yet determined if the Marsh's homeowner's insurance would pay out for this, it was considered non-collectible. However, unexpectedly, the insurance eventually did pay out, although they were made to settle for $18 million. Walker County, where this took place, also sued the Marsh family to cover the costs of the investigation, asking for $2 million. However, this was dismissed. A lot of the settlement has been paid off, with the Marsh family paying for virtually nothing. An acre of the Marsh property was set aside as a conservation area, leaving it in a natural state in memorial of those who sadly rotted away there. The land remains belonging to the Marsh family, however, and the public is not allowed. Lawyers demanded that the Marsh family finally tell the family members why he failed to cremate the bodies and why all this had to happen. He didn't. He pled the fifth. He told the victims, in court, to those of you who may have come here today looking for answers, I cannot give you. He feared self-incrimination and decided to keep his mouth shut. Which is actually a really wise move that a lot of criminals fail to do, so I've got to kind of commend him for that, at least. Later on, a theory was proposed and a study was performed showing that both Ray Marsh and his father had likely been slowly poisoned by mercury over the years. It's believed that the mercury fillings in people's teeth would release toxins when burned, slowly taking a toll on the brains of both Ray and his father. There were problems with the ventilation and stovepipes of the crematory oven, leaving heavy particles all over the inside of the facility. 
Ray had often complained of insomnia, headaches, and body aches, all symptoms of mercury poisoning. A mercury test kit used on Ray indicated extremely high levels of aluminum, antimony, arsenic, cadmium, lead, nickel, and tin within his system. Some of them were eight times the healthy limit. Lawyers even said that, the longer Ray was away from the property, the more clear-headed he seemed to become. He earned both a master's and a doctorate in theology while in prison, even. And uh, that's pretty impressive for people who aren't in prison, so. This mercury poisoning could explain both Ray's actions and the slow mental deterioration and eventual death of his father. However, due to a lack of any hard evidence, it's really hard to prove. And many still remain skeptical. Years later, everything on the Tri-State Crematorium property was razed to the ground, leaving no trace of what was once there. A memorial was erected in respect of the victims. In June of 2016, Ray Marsh was released from prison, completing his 12-year sentence. Although he still got 75 years of probation. Let's just call it what it is, probation for life. He wrote a letter of apology to the victims. Victims are, for the most part, unhappy with his release. Although he served his time, they simply don't want to exist within the same community as him. As per conditions of his parole, Marsh is required to pay all of his fines within a year, handwrite a unique apology letter for each of the families of the remains of those identified, and write a letter of apology to the community. He is also not allowed to profit from this case in any way whatsoever. No talk show appearances, no books, no tell-alls, nothing. To this day, Ray Marsh has never given an explanation on why he did what he did, and uh, chances are he never will. He may not even know himself. So do you think that Ray Marsh has done his time? Uh, do you think he deserved more time? What if he really was suffering from mercury poisoning? Does that change your opinion at all on the matter? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, give the video a like if you really want to. Subscribe if you like. I'll be posting a lot more like this very soon. So, uh, see you later.